The new M5S from Anycubic is the latest in resin printing technology. This new printer comes with a staggering 12K resolution screen, completely hands-free auto-leveling, as well as a new release form which enables this printer to print at 105 millimeters per hour, which is roughly three times as fast as a standard resin printer. Today we'll be going through the unboxing and setup process so that you can do your first print on your new M5S. Well, let's get to it. Once you have your print out of the box, you are greeted with a smile from Anycubic. First, remove the UV protective cover. Afterwards, remove the packaged foam at the top, which has the bull plate inside of it. Here we can see the awesome laser etched bull plates, which helps with adhesion. Next is to remove the steel vat, which comes with a pre-installed release foam. Here we can see it is nicely wrapped in bubble wrap and there we can see as well there is a protector on the fib form at the bottom as well. You also have this little brown box. Some of the things you will find in this box is the power cables, your scrapers, as well as some of your protective gear that you'll be needing when you use this printer. The power block that comes with this printer has an output of 24 volts at 120 watts and 5 ampere. You also have a kettle plug that comes with it that plugs into that power block, a steel scraper, a set of allen keys and some protective masks and one use filters. You also have your plastic scraper to remove anything from the bottom of the vat as well as a screen cleaning kit. You also receive some one use protective gloves and a USB dongle for storing your files. The last thing in the brown box are the screws that tie the vat down to the printer itself. Next we'll move on to the main body of the printer. After removing some of the shipping foam on top, you will see the screen revealed to you, which is also covered by a scratch protector. All you have to do then is remove the printer from the rest of the package foam. Here's a bit of a closer look at how the printer looks as it comes right out of the box. So that will be everything you will find in the box. All that's left to do is to move on to installation. So that is everything you will find in the box included with the new M5S from Anycubic. Uh, everything we have here on the table laid out is what we will be needing for the initial installation, which is going to be the installation guide with the screen protector that we get with the machine now, the lid for the machine, the machine itself, the vat, the two screws to tie down the vat to the machine, the bowl plate, the plastic scraper that we will be using to install that screen protector, and then the power cable and power block that comes with it. The first thing we're going to do is we will be installing the screen protector. So let's get to it. So to start off with, we will be plugging in the printer just so that we can raise the bed up higher so that we can have easy access to the screen and lay down the screen protector as best as we can without any hindrance. So the first thing we will do is take out the screen protector from the bag that it comes with. So it has a protector from over the front and the back where the adhesive side is. So uh, before we can take off the back side uh, adhesive form, we shall take off this protective form that's on the screen first. I'm going to try and line this up as well as I can. We can now take the top side of the film and start peeling that off, which is just the protective for the for the protector. <laughs> it's a protector film for the protector film. So the bull plate no longer has any Allen key screws on the four sides for leveling because the M5S has completely hands-free auto leveling, which is something I'm very interested in seeing how well it works. So for installation, you take off the peel on the bull plate revealing the laser edged surface that it has. I don't know if I can get an angle where it actually shows it off really well. There we go. And then you line up the slot with the rod. You just have to loosen it a little bit because it is yeah, tied down all the way. You slide it over. There we go. Tie it down. Then your bill plate is installed as well. Final step, the bat installation. Now the vat is made of steel, 
uh, stainless steel. It is quite heavy and sturdy as well. So very, very high quality vat, which is awesome. It also has a protective film at the bottom that you should remove before putting it onto the screen itself. Peel off the protective film. Really, now they're new release film or quick release film. As you can see, it's quite foggy. But you can barely see through it at all. I, mean, I don't know if you can see, see my face through it at all, but it's very, very foggy, but it is a new technology from Anycubic. It's called a release film. They are a little bit more expensive uh, than the previous FEB films that have come with other printers, but they should act to quickly release the print therefore allowing faster prints to be done uh, with less print failures. A lot of you who have done resin printing before might have noticed that sometimes prints tend to rip off of the ball plate and stay on the fib forms. This is to reduce the chances of that happening. That might also be what contributes to the speed of the printer being able to print at 105 millimeters per hour, which is around three times faster than most commercial printers, um, which is really really amazing cool after that has been installed you are now basically ready to just remove the protective film on the UV resistant lid itself and then put it over top and with that you have a complete printer so the first thing we'll see is Anycubic's logo and the name It'll then also run a auto device check every single time you turn on the machine to see that everything is still fine. So the first thing we will see on the starting screen will be your USB and local storage. Currently there is nothing on either of these two. The one tab down from there is the tools tab. So this is where you can go and move your Z axis up and down. The cool thing that I haven't seen on previous printers is that there is an emergency stop button for when you move your head up and down. So I can quickly show you by zooming out here, initiate a 50 millimeter drop, it'll start moving. But as soon as I hit this button, it immediately stops way before uh, you get to that 15 millimeter area, which is really, really cool because I know a lot of people have been trying to raise the, raise the ball plate all the way up to the top or all the way down and uh, it hasn't honed, so it doesn't necessarily know where the ball plate is and it can sometimes drive that ball plate into the screen causing cracks. So this is really, really cool that they added this little function in there. I'm really happy about that. Uh, then there is also obviously the home button and then it has a few more tabs down on the settings as well. First one being the move Z axis. Then you get to your exposure screen where you can choose one of three different exposure screens where you can select a set amount of 10 seconds to 50 seconds or enter your own custom amount as well. So you can do a 15 second exposure time too. The next step down is the vat cleaning function, which is basically uh, your exposure settings, but it's going to expose the entire screen um, to remove that little bottom layer, maybe with a print failure in it. Last thing is your monitoring. This is where it, it will check your number of prints you've done, the number of layers you've printed, and uh, where you can also turn on your error auto pausing and auto device check. Following down, we can go to our info and it'll have your two languages that you can choose, which is Chinese or Mandarin, not exactly sure, <laughs> and English. The service would be just, I believe, yeah, a website link to the Anycubic website for the help page or you can just scan the QR code to go to the help center directly. So when you go down to the history, you will they see your print histories to see how long they took, how many layers they were and all of that. Currently, we do not have anything yet on the printer. When you go to more settings, here you can turn on your voice option. The voice option is just a sound for when you click on buttons like this. If you don't want the voice, then you can just turn it off and you will have no beeping when you go through the menus. It also shows you the version, which is the system or just the model of the printer, which is the Photon Mono M5S. The version information would be the current firmware that is loaded onto it, as well as the version serial number and ID for this machine. Last but not least, it is your cloud, where you can connect to a network or the Anycubic app. So if you wanted to do cloud printing, you can do that as well with this printer. What we're gonna do now is just plug in the USB that comes with this printer, which should be uploaded with a few default files from Anycubic themselves. Once we plug in the USB, the list will refresh. 
and we have four default files uploaded from Anycubic that are used as test files. And then we'll be doing a custom slice in the Anycubic slicing software to see how well that slicing software works, how easy it is to use, and seeing if it's worth having to switch over to that software for this specific machine. Good job. Let's get to it. Let's test the resin detection system. Let's see if the resin detection does work. So we're just gonna choose the default file and we will just hit print here. And it'll go down and is now lowering the bed to the bat to do the auto leveling real quickly. So it will auto level every single time with every print, I'm pretty sure. So it's gonna go down once, lift a little bit and then go down again. So after the bed has completely gone down twice and just before it starts the print, it brings up this message saying that please replenish the resin. The resin cannot complete printing. So you can either have it and check it again. You can stop, stop the print completely or you can just ignore this message as well, which will continue the print from there. So here we have the Anycubic Photon Workshop, which is the slicer that we will be using for the M5S. You can find this slicer and download it from the Anycubic website. To quickly show you how to slice something for a resin printer, I will take you step by step through the entire process. First thing is that you need to make sure that you have the Anycubic Photon M5S selected as your machine. The second thing is to create a profile for your resin. Here I have the Creality Resin um, Plus Gray, which is what we will be using for this print. Now we have our little Totoro here, which is uh, just going to be an example. It's not what we're going to be printing, but I just wanted to use this really quickly to show you what to do. With resin printing, you need to make sure that you rotate your print at a 45 degree angle. It just helps a bunch with support to make sure that the supports can hold onto the print and also aid with helping that there is no print failures. After you've done the rotating, you then have to go to the supports menu up here. Once you have the supports menu, you can select a light, medium, or heavy supports. For this, we will be using just medium supports right now and just let's see what the automatic supports look like. To generate the supports, we hit generate automatic supports. Just give it a moment for them to generate those supports. And there you go. It generates all the supports needed as well as a raft. You can see here where all the supports connect to the print. After this has all been done, you just have to hit the slice button here, give it a chance to give a slice through, and it'll give you this preview. Basically what this shows is the printing process. So if I take this all the way down, this is going to be your first layer. And as you raise this up, it shows you how the print is going to be made throughout the entire process, at which height and at which layer here on the right side. So once the print is done, the final layer will be just the tip of the ear, just all the way up here. So yeah, after you've done that, you just hit save slice file. But yeah, let's get to resin printing. So this brings us to the conclusion of the M5S and uh, playing around with the M5S. Main thing that I can take away from this is that it is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant printer. It does live up to that 12K resolution. It really, really does look good. Some other takeaways I have about this printer that I feel is quite important to mention. The high speed printing, that 105 millimeters per hour printing, you cannot do it with just any resin. It is only valid for high-speed resins 
maybe only any cubic high speed resin i'm not exactly sure but standard resins you need to print at those standard speeds still so all that that means is that if you want to print at those high speeds you do need to get high speed resin another thing that i also have heard and have noticed from some of our customers that i've already purchased an m5s is that after 10,000 layers of printing the printer will pop up with a message saying that the lifetime expectancy of the release form has uh, expired and that you need to replace that fib form. This is just a built-in mechanism into the firmware of the printer uh, counting the layers that it has already printed. And after 10,000 it will say, hey, it's been 10,000 layers, you might need to replace your release form. But because the release forms are quite a bit expensive, I would say make your own judgments about whether you still think that your release form is working as intended, then replace it whenever you feel like it has done its due. The auto leveling does work really, really well. I didn't have any issues with the auto leveling throughout the entire process of the printing. Another thing that doesn't have anything to do with the hardware side of the printer, but more on the software side is that the slicing software, Anycubic Photon Workshop, really is great now in my personal opinion i enjoyed the process of working with any cubic post on workshop this has been a blast printing with this little guy if you guys have any other questions regarding this printer please leave them in the comment section below i would do my absolute best to get to every single comment and um, answer as best as i can so yeah then i'll see you guys in our next video